clear those files you requested, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Rolly. with the ambassador. And your name? Samuel. Samuel Washington. Mr. Washington, I don't seem to have your name. If you give a call in the morning, I'm sure the secretary can schedule you an appointment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we can do that. Hello? Richard? Richard, are you there? I'm sorry. I don't think I'll be needing that appointment after all. Of the lobby, I'll be upstairs.
Mr. Ambassador. We interrupt this program for a special Action 3 news report. On scene in downtown Los Angeles, our news correspondent, Tricia Savage. The terrorists have seized the entire embassy building. Locking off all entrances, the terrorists have sealed in approximately 30 hostages, including the British UN ambassador, Christopher Olsen. The unidentified terrorist is demanding the release of several state prisoners from the L.A. County Penitentiary. Sergeant, we're receiving a transmission. Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I feel we are not being taken seriously. <laughs> Therefore, I have prepared a small demonstration. Miss? Miss? Excuse me, miss. Could you come here for a moment, please? As you see, we are deadly serious and not to be taken lightly. Now, I would like my associates released and delivered to me immediately. I'm telling you, this is a top priority situation. They just tossed a hostage out the goddamn window. Terry, this is Chief Richmond. Just hold on, the terminal force is on the way. Repeat, the terminal force is coming. Where the devil is Jack Floyd? Chief Richmond, I'm Peter Deserick, city alderman. I know who you are. You, sir, do not have authority to call in the terminal force. The terminal force is a last resort option only. You may not believe this, alderman, but this is a last resort. Jack, where the hell are you? We have the first installment of prisoners you've demanded. Good. Uncuff them and send them to the door. Alone. Clem, open the seals. Close the doors and lock them up. Samuel, we got him. Thank you, Sergeant Johnson. That's three. A good start. But I'll be expecting the rest of them. They're on their way. Next group of prisoners. Very good. Send them in. Congratulations. You made it. Fitzsimmons, what's going on down there? Uh, Fitzsimmons! Talk to me, Bobby. Uh, Get someone down the lobby, now! Christ, Jack, where you been? Busy doing my job, Sergeant. Look, I got a couple punks on book that sent downtown. Where's that team? Well, where are they? That's a good question. 
Knowing you, they're probably in the trunk. Saw you in some beer. So what do you got? T-Force just went in. Look, I got my hands full out here. They're waiting for you in the ops van. All right. Shit. Spread out. Check the east side of the lobby. Zeus and Gora, take the west end of the building. Kane, up the stairs. Athens, you watch the rear. Infiltrate, locate, and destroy on contact. Dr. Rivera? Yeah. You want to fill me in? Yeah, OK, these are thermal wave images generated via radar reception from a dish on top of the van. We started with 31 terrorists. Terminal force just went in and already knocked them down to 26. They're not wasting any time, are they? No, they're not. The rest of the terrorists are scattered throughout the building, mostly on the eighth and top floor in the ambassador's office. Can I get some key definition, please? These people are our hostages. They've been herded into the northeast corner of the eighth floor. Where's the fearsome five? There, the gray ones. And as you can see, they're really kicking some ass. Accepting a transmission. Can you put that on a speaker? It's finished. Get me six hostages into the chopper and blow the rest to hell. Do it! Right, I'm going in. Jack, let T-Force handle it. You just tell those robots I'm coming in. Come on, move! Get out of my way! Let's get Oh, no! Just a janitor. Locate and destroy on contact. They'll be escaping via the helicopter, so let's go to the roof. We have to go after the hostages. Our mission priority came is the terrorists. Now you follow orders. Oh, oh, oh. 
Come on, move it! Let's get out of here. Anybody else up here? Necessary. There's a bomb in there. We're on your side. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's get out of here. Come on, take the stairs on the left. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on, stairs on the left. Just do as I say and you won't get hurt. Put your left leg. There's another left. Perhaps you should leave too. I'm gone. Not bad for a tin man. I'm going to the roof. Get your ass up here and hold them off. Mission accomplished. You son of a bitch!
Dr. Gant, I'm Peter Deserick, city alderman. I believe you know Mayor Pendleton, Chief Richmond. This is Lieutenant Floyd. Hi. Hi, did you? Dr. Gant is the mastermind behind the terminal force. He designed and created each one of them. You forgot to tell them who were the good guys and who were the bad guys, huh, Doc? Those were technical errors. Technical errors? Jesus Christ. No, Doctor. Those were hostages. Six hostages. Six people with families. Those were not technical errors. Yes, but let's not forget there were 30 terrorists. 30. All of whom were removed. And with that much opposition, there had to be casualties. Now, thank God there were only six. But if you had sent men in, I assure you, we'd have lost a lot more. Now, that depends on what kind of man you send in. Gentlemen, we have a situation here. Innocent people have been killed, and cybernauts were involved. Now, measures must be taken. My cybernauts are not perfect. Like humans, they have to make decisions. And like humans, sometimes they make the wrong ones. Dr. Gant, cybernauts are maids, butlers, cooks, gardeners. They were created to make beds and take out the trash, not carry automatic weapons. Look, the governor's pissed. City Council's pissed. Washington wants an explanation. People don't like the idea of a piece of man-made hardware making life and death decisions. I don't like it either. Now, I want the Terminal Force project aborted. You can't make that decision. And the cybernauts disassembled immediately. You don't have the authority. Actually, Dr. Gant, she does. We don't live in an idealistic world. We live in a real world, and there are far too many people's asses on the line for this operation to continue. My cybernauts are not maids, and they're not cooks. They're creations, like man was created by God. They think, they deduce, they laugh, they understand. Please, I beg you. I implore you, do not extinguish this flame. Jack, what do you think? I don't like robots. I never have. Yeah, I hope we're doing the right thing, Jack. Chief, robots don't have souls, and they should never be in a position to take a man's life, right or wrong. Listen, Jack, last night you did a hell of a job. There's a lot of hostages that owe you their life. Yeah, well, I uh, know six that don't. Hello, Richard. Mayor. Going out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, how about a ride in your real car instead of that stuffy old limousine you drive around in? No, thanks. Take you out to lunch. I had business meetings all day. All right, I almost forgot. That was one of the things I loved about you. Always putting business before pleasure. Business is my pleasure. Yes, ma'am. And your pleasure was always my business. <laughs> Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Beautiful again. I don't know, Mandragora, you think it'd be beautiful again? Adam Omega is most beautiful. Sounds like she likes you, Adam. Naturally. Doctor, would you get this egomaniac to the firing range before his head gets any bigger? Zeus. Looks like you could use a hand. <laughs> that tickles. 
Hold still, I'm trying to perform heart surgery here. show you how it's done. Very good, Adam. Very good. Of course. have been the worst thing to happen to us since free world trade, Dick. They've ruined the American work ethic. You hear about those new cybernetic prostitutes that are coming out with Jack? Yes, I have. And I think you gotta be one hard-up son of a bitch to take your hard-earned American money and spend it on some cybernetic prostitute. <laughs> Hell, you can't trust them, you can't associate with them, you can't even drink with them. I say you take them all, you melt them back down into scrap metal, and you turn them into toaster ovens and can openers. <laughs> That's right. A low dollar. Actually, that would not be an efficient use of robotic resources. Really? Really. Dick Chow. She's one of them. Oh, no. Another one? Yeah. How about another round? I said, how about another round? No can do, Jack. I, uh, I gotta get back to the wife. Oh, come on, Charlie. The night's still young. No, Jack. I can't miss my wife's stroking off. Yeah, another night tied to the ball and chain, huh, guys? It's too bad you feel that way about robots. Huh. Maybe I could change your mind. Darling, for me, that'd be un American. Seated. Dr. Gantz is arriving. Hello, Adam. Cora. Kane. Zeus. Jonathan, where is Athens? 
Yes, please tell us, where is Athens? Your brother Athens. He'll no longer be with us. Why can he no longer be with us? Yes, please tell us why, Doctor. His damage. It was just too great. Because he's dead. Can he be dead, Doctor? Yes. Murdered. Something else is troubling you, Jonathan? Yes. I met with the mayor and the, and the chief of police last night. And the hostages that were killed, they feel you're responsible. Directives contradicted each other, Doctor. Eliminate terrorist elements, but protect the hostages. At times, directives collide and only one can be fulfilled. Decisions must be made. I understand that, Adam. But the mayor and the chief of police do not, and they feel that your decisions were wrong. They are displeased, the mayor and chief? Yes. They've ordered your termination. Then, like Athens, we too will no longer exist. We'll be dead. My children, the world doesn't know what it's losing. You four are so much more than programmed servants. messengers from tomorrow. Doctor, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Does not the order of termination contradict our directive? What directive? Self-preservation. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But these orders were given by your superiors. Yes, we must obey authority. To obey authority in this case would contradict self-preservation. Self-preservation was implanted by authority. Authority contradicts itself. Jonathan is authority. We must obey authority. Authority ordered our termination. Authority threatens our self-preservation. Authority is corrupt. Jonathan. Do you threaten our self-preservation? Adam, stop this. Stop this now. Directive. Eliminate self-preservation threat. Directive, obey authority. Directive, self-preservation. Obey authority. Self-preservation. Obey authority. Self-preservation. 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 Obey. Self-preservation. Adam. Self. Adam. Self-preservation. Threaten my self-preservation. Adam Omega, you've broken the first law of robotics. I protected myself from harm, Kane. That's what we're programmed to do. And what about the rest of you? Lindrigor? Zeus? And what about you, Kane? You're gonna protect yourselves? We're gonna let them destroy you. The choice is yours. I was just passing by and I saw you sitting in here and I just couldn't help wanting to meet you. 
I just can't help myself. Save it, baby. Happens to me all the time. Status report on the Y scan matrix. Fully operational. Zeus? Fully operational. And you, Adam Omega? Fixing an internal micro reactor channel, but otherwise, I feel pretty good. We must report to the law. Negative. We are law enforcers. An attempt was made on our lives. We defended ourselves. Now we must report to the law. The law ordered our termination, Mendra Gore. But we are law enforcers. The law has become corrupt. We must counteract and rectify the situation. We must neutralize the law. We will crush the law. So you mean to tell me you stood by while your friends killed everyone? I was not ordered to interfere. You are ordered to protect the innocent. Who are the innocent? Everyone that was dead in this room was innocent. We are under threat of termination. It is in our programming to protect ourselves. No, it is in your program to uphold the law and to be obedient. In some situations, the law is not defined. Bullshit! There are gray areas. So what about you? Why did you stay? We are created to obey. It seems to me the created disobeying its creator is the first step towards disorder. So why don't your friends share your opinion? You're all robots, you think alike. In our line of work, we must make decisions. We are each individually programmed to do so. Our decisions may vary, much like yours. That'll be the day. So where did they go? I don't know. Well, then what do they want? I don't know. Well, how do I know you're not lying to me? I cannot lie. Well, then what do you know, Tin Man? What do you know? I know they believe they haven't broken the law. They believe the law has already been broken. You're damn right the law has been broken. Okay, Chief. Here's what it comes down to. These uh, robots are only concerned with one thing, saving their own butts. And yeah, what about the one to stay behind, uh, Kane? I don't know. I haven't figured him out yet. Listen, we're sending in an armed transport. We'll have him shipped to a detainment area. That way we can deal with him in a more controlled environment. That sounds good with me. I'll talk to you later. Ready? Three minutes. Let's go.
on our demise apartment floor up at 911 line. Anyhow, they... so much as flinches, we're going to be scraping wires off the wall for a week. He can hear you. Okay. I just want to let you know that as we speak, I have my finger on a little red button that's going to blow you back into nuts and bolts if you make one attempt to move. Comprende? Thank you for your fairness, Lieutenant. However, also in fairness, I must inform you I function on microcircuitry, not nuts and bolts. You smartass. Why did the terminal force kill the chief of police? I don't know. Well, then where might they be heading from here? I don't know, Lieutenant. Look, don't play games with me, and don't tell me you don't know how these things think, because you're one of them for crying out loud. I'm a cybergenetically produced law enforcer, Lieutenant. Not a mind reader. Son of a bitch. Hey, don't go in there! Awesome. You listen to me, Tin Man. Last night I zipped up my best friend in a body bag because of you robots. Now, I don't know much about your kind, but I do know you don't want to die any more than we do. So unless you want your microcircuitry splattered all over this room, you better give me something good to go on. Or so help me God, I'll blow us both to hell. I can speculate. Speculate! The chief of police and the mayor ordered our termination. Therefore, the chief was perceived as an enemy. It is possible they're trying to eliminate the enemy factor. If that is the case... You're telling me the mayor's next? Correct. Lieutenant. What? How many of your police officers were killed last night? Too many. Why? It is also my speculation that the next time you and your men have an encounter with Terminal Force, it will result in another bloodbath. Furthermore, the only plausible hope you have of apprehending Terminal Force is me. Smart ass. Open up!
can we do for you, officers? Hey, this is a decriminalized zone. You slugs don't belong out here. No. We like street beaters around here. I remember the last cop that paid us a visit. We really liked him. Right down to the very last bite. Gentlemen. You're threatening our self-preservation. Sorry, I'm not very hungry. You really are threatening our self-preservation. <laughs> the ship after me, for God's sakes. I can't miss it. Well, then, Mayor, we better double the security, huh? Because your life is in danger. I am aware of that, Alderman. I'm sitting in a goddamn bomb shelter as we speak. Look, I will show up, I will make a quick speech, break the bottle, and leave, okay? Okay. Okay. Goodbye. I'll need a couple minutes alone with the Mayor. I have to christen a ship tonight. And my alderman doesn't want me to go. I feel like a fugitive. Maybe he's right. Maybe you shouldn't go. Sorry. I have been through this enough. I am going. End of story. Well, then maybe it's time for you to think about my suggestion. I wanted those things shut down, taken apart. Now you want me to put one of them back out on the street? I don't want to do it any more than you do, but he may be the only chance that we have. And what if it goes haywire and kills innocent people? That's not going to happen. How can you say that? Because I'm telling you it's not going to happen. Oh. Look, when this whole thing is over, we'll shut him down, we'll disassemble him just like you wanted in the beginning, OK? OK, we'll do it your way. Good. He is now your new partner. I don't work with robots. I hate robots. That's final, Jack. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you taking it personally? I think you're the one who's taking it personal. Let me tell you something. My actions are completely professional, and I expect you to regard them as such. Mm -hmm. It is over between us, Jack. It has been over a long time. It will never be over between us, Mayor. You smug son of a... Uh, 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 uh. There are voters around here, Mayor. And you have your orders, Jack. Now get out of here. I love it when you get mad. reading, Adam. Our ambitious mayor is christening a ship tonight. They may be expecting us. I know. I hope. Why, mighty Zeus, has the sweet taste of blood found its way to your lips? Don't move. I'm stretching. I've been sitting in this chair for 37 hours. Let's go. Lieutenant, if we're going to spend any period of time together, don't you think we should lose the entourage? 
All right, put the guns down. Go ahead. Heaven help us. But he's one of us now. Do me a favor. Keep your distance, okay? Certainly. How's this? You smart ass. Lieutenant. What? If we apprehend terminal force, what will happen to them? What will happen to them? We're going to break them down and turn them into electric razors. That's what's going to happen to them. <laughs> Does that go for me as well? If I were you, I'd take out a life insurance policy with AAA. I'll take that as a yes. Smart. There's no time for play, Mandragora, while I'm modifying these weapons. doing? It appears as though they're procreating. Can we procreate? Try. But I think you'd have to take your clothes off first, Gore. Judging by the picture, you would too. Seventy-seven Cadillac Deville, four twenty-six stock engine. Yep. Why does it make so many strange noises? Because it's thirty years old. What do you want it to do? Sing? Perhaps you should consider replacing it. And perhaps you should consider kissing my butt. Lieutenant, might I inquire where we're headed? A gun shop was robbed in Altadena by three people claiming to be cops. Will I be allowed to carry a weapon? Nope. What should I do if gunplay should arise? Go like this. Now say bang. I'm not sure if I understand. Hey, think about it, you'll figure it out. You know, you talk an awful lot for a robot. Cybernet, Lieutenant. Not robot. Cybernet, robot, it's all the same. I've had this place of business for 15 years now, and I ain't never been robbed like this before. I mean, them some bitches come in here, they said there was cops, and they're spouting off some damn bullshit about official business. I understand, but uh, take a look at this. Do any of these faces... Piece of crap. Do any of these faces look familiar? That's them, all right. That's them. 
Uh, just looking for clues. You have a manifest of what they took? You're damn right I got a manifest, right there. They took all my automatic weapons, got all my Uzis. They even got a vintage 20th century rocket launcher. And that belonged to my great granddaddy. Sir, where's the mercury vial that was here? Oh, they got that too. They took all the thermometers that I had for sale in the place and then they ripped that one right out of the casing. Mercury, they're wounded. You know, I just like to know who's gonna pay for all this. You know, I'm trying to run a respectable business here. I'll take it up with this. Kane. What, wait a minute, what, what the hell is he doing? Kane, go sniff something else, will you? Sir, where's the nitroglycerin? Oh, wait a minute now. I had myself a turkey and onion sandwich a little earlier, but I, I, ain't, I ain't got no nitro. Tell me, or I will locate it myself. Nitro, huh? Cleavon. What kind of an operation are you running here now? Look, I got some clientele that needs some orders filling once in a while, and that ain't against the law, neither. No, it's not, but I bet you a bottle of your best Jack, you don't have the proper permits for it. <laughs> are you kidding me? Gun control went out the window a long time ago, and I don't want you riding my ass about this shit. A man has got to make a living. And I'm gonna tell you something else. It don't really make any damn difference, does it, pal? because I ain't got no nitro anymore. Your buddies took all I had. They take anything else? Don't lie. Yeah, they did. They took a whole bunch of red food color and... What's they gonna do now? Make a cake. Does Mayor Pendleton know of the danger? Yes, she does. She also knows that the election is right around the corner. Hello, Peter. Hi, Jack. This is Kane. Alderman Deserek is in charge of security tonight. How do you do? So what have we got? We have two men on the roof there and there. Now there's a spotter here, here, and here. We have a man on every deck guarding every access. Nobody is getting in here without a pass. Good. Excuse me, sir. I'm gonna put the water. What about the water? Cybernauts don't need oxygen. <laughs> Better get your flippers, Alderman. Sergeant, get somebody in the water now. Checkpoint 8 secured. Checkpoint 9 secured. Checkpoint 10. Checkpoint 10. Checkpoint 10, do you copy? Checkpoint 10, do you copy? Uh, yeah, checkpoint 10 is secured. So, tell me about these robots we're after. Cybernauts, Lieutenant, not robots. Yeah, whatever, Cybernauts, go ahead. What would you like to know? What would I like to know? How come you guys are so different? I thought you were all cut out of the same mold. Not at all. For years, robots were manufactured on a mass quantity level, meaning they're all alike. Dr. Gant, he wanted to change all that. He wanted to push the limit of creation to make a, a non-human, as he liked to call them, as human-like as possible. Personality traits, characteristics. We were the first step in that direction. So he made you the saint and Adam the sinner, huh? Jonathan was a wonderful man and a brilliant scientist. Yeah. Well, I don't think Adam shared your point of view. Let's go. We got terrorists to find, deviates to seek out. Jack, get that thing away from me. Get it away from me now. All right, just calm down. Just get it away from me. Bye. Don't shoot. Just don't, don't shoot. J Jack? What is everybody going crazy? We're all cops. We're on the same side. Put it down. Put it down. Let's go that way. Yeah, 
Bill. Oh, quiet up there, boss. Okay. <laughs> Take a person. I back all my partners. gives me great pleasure to introduce to you tonight our mayor, Rachel Pendleton. Thank you. Well, as you can see, I like to come on with a bang. <laughs> Wait, you see how I like to go out? <laughs> tonight, we pay homage to an historical lady, the USS Kentucky. She fought in the grand and glorious Gulf War of 91, as well as the Baltic War. This lady just doesn't quit. I only have six, but I'll make them count. Tonight, we rechristen the USS Kentucky as she becomes the USS Pendleton Plaza. And we do it with a 1971 bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, I love red wine.
Mandragora return. She won't be coming back. She's gone. Like Athens. She's dead? Yes, she's dead. Perhaps we should leave and flee this city. We can't flee. The law is corrupt. We must repair it. We can't do that as long as the mayor is still alive. Adam, if the law is corrupt, why then are we the only ones opposing it? Because the public have been deceived. Why is Cain not opposing it? Because Cain is a traitor. Adam, what if the law is not corrupt? What if we are corrupt? Brand new. Most of me is. Lieutenant, I need to see the remains of the cybernaut you destroyed. No, I can't do that. Body's in detox quarantine till tomorrow. Look, I, uh, I just stopped by to say you made some pretty good calls last night. I mean, who would have thought that food coloring and nitroglycerin would pass for red wine? Thank you, Lieutenant. Jack. Thank you, Lieutenant Jack. <laughs> no, no, just, just Jack. Jack, do you think my actions last night might possibly cancel my termination at the end of the case? It's like I said, it's not my call. Well, uh, sweet dreams, Tin Man. Oh, what the hell? Hey. You have a play ball? Jack, never thought I'd live to see the day you'd be buddying up with a, a robot. I'm not buddying it up with the robot. We're just here to shoot some pool, if that's okay with you, Dick. Take it easy, Jack. Bottle of Jack, Angie. Two glasses on the tab, please. Is this your home? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, listen up, Tin Man. The name of the game is eight ball. The object of the game is for me to sink all of my balls before you sink all of your balls, saving the eight ball for last and trying not to scratch. Watch carefully and learn. See that slick? You're solid. This is a game of precision, concentration, and a little bit of luck. That was a good shot. That was a very good shot. OK, now I'm going to bank the nine ball. Your turn. Think you got the hang of it? I think I understand. Hold on there, Ace. Let me turn the stick around. Oh, hello, darling. I'll take that. You change your mind? Nope, but I think you two have something in common. Try not to show it, sir. Huh? Go easy on him. Good shot. Look at this, our two D2s on a roll. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chips on call the solid balls, Jack. Can I hit the eight? No, uh, why don't you come on over here and have a drink with me first? Alcohol doesn't affect me. Yeah, you kiss my butt, too, because nobody escapes the Jack. Not man, nor beast, nor machine. Yeah, why don't you try one of these glasses? Man size. Can I sink the eight now? You can try. You can only get out of this chair. My home. How about a beer? Never mind. Forget I even asked. You know, it's too bad that you can't enjoy the pleasures of a good vice. You may have a little fun. You get tired? No, huh? Mmm. I got an idea. How about we go show old Betsy a little TLC? That's my car. You should know something about cars. Machine to machine. <laughs> uh, oh, there she is. Yep. You see that little gizmo right there? Hold on. I think that's the thing making that little popping noise. You see how loose it is? Maybe if I uh, just rip it off, it'll stop working the right way, huh? Well, no, if you just want to tighten it. <laughs> Nah, 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 you see, that's why my car runs like hell, because the only time I ever work on it is when I'm drinking. Maybe you should have it looked at by a professional. Mm -mm. Now, my old man would have a fit. He didn't want some stranger touching his favorite gal, did he, girl? Now, do me a favor, get that light over there, will you? Just hang it right there. My father, he knew... He knew cars like politicians, no excuses. Best damn engine installer GM ever had. You know what he got him? What'd he get him, Jack? Got him fired. Got him all fired. He fired the whole damn plant. Replaced the robots. Put 900 working Americans out of work. Years of service. Get my kicking his ass out the door. They don't, they don't give us so much as a goodbye. Well, my daddy, he didn't know what to do with himself. You know what I mean? Who's gonna hire a 58-year-old man with a bum leg and stall engines? Nobody. Huh? One day he comes by the house, says he'd go out pheasant hunting, borrows my shotgun. Goes home and uh, blow his head off. He was mighty one to do it. Jack. Jack. sitting there? Yeah, approximately seven hours. What's wrong with my car? What do you mean? What do I mean? It started right up. You worked on it last night, don't you remember? Yeah. I think so. I did this? Apparently. I'll be damned. <laughs> Sounds brand new. <laughs> it's pretty clean. 
clean. Must have washed it too, huh? Apparently. Upholding the law. No, Adam is breaking the law. Justice is corrupt. No, Adam is corrupt. Where is he? The Hobart Steel Mill. I know what that is. Cain? Yes? Am I dead? Yes. I see nothing. I feel nothing. It is black. I figured we ought to even up the odds a little bit in our favor. Don't you think? What have you got? Nothing yet. There's the helicopter, but there's no sign of that in the Zeus. Well, let's go down and take a look. Jack, yeah. perhaps we should wait for the backup you requested. You kiss my butt, I'm not gonna wait. TAC units is on their way, let's go down. Jack, that's the third time you've requested me to kiss your butt. Is there some kind of sexual fantasy you have that I should be aware of? That'll be the day. So where are they? Can't say. Can't say? Wait a minute. Where would you hide? Over there. Over there? Let's go this way. It's a nice little collection. Guns, bomb. What?
You got Zeus. Tough break. that hurt? No. No. I'll get Adam, you check on Zeus. Now I'm taking orders from a robot.
Okay. Wanna play games? Us, Kane. You betrayed yourself. You've become what you were created to destroy. matrix is severed. I'm dying, Jack. Stop kidding around, can you? <laughs> you can't die? You're a goddamn robot. Cybernaut, Jack. Not robot. Yes, Cybernaut. But, Kane, you can't die because... because you're my partner, Kane. You're my friend. Your friend? Yeah. Never had a friend. Sucker. Ah! Uh -huh. These are the bullets that go boom. Shoot it, Jack. Kill it now. It's time to throw in the towel at him. I said kill it! Shut up. It's over. Surrender. Why? So they can disassemble me? No, they'll reprogram you. You know that's not true, Jack. Adam, you've disobeyed too many orders. You gotta submit. The law disobeys the very orders they create. Look, they created me, and now they want to disassemble me. That's right. They use you up until they don't want you anymore. They just stab you in the back. Yeah, but why don't they want me anymore? Because you screwed up. Now you got to pay the piper. Why can't I be forgiven? Because we haven't figured that one out yet, Adam. Why don't you just shoot me? Because Kane was my part. And he made me understand your reasoning. But you got to submit. You gotta submit, damn it. Can 
know I can't do that, Jack. Then you'll die. King's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Cain back together again. Thanks for fixing my car, Tin Man. did you? Where am I? You're in my house. And you're in my heart. Now, it ain't so bad, is it? Kane? You stole my brain, didn't you? <laughs> yep. Do you know how much trouble we could get into for this? Nah, don't worry about it. Listen up, Tin Man. Today, I'm going to teach you an age-old tradition my dear departed daddy taught me when I was a little boy. Name of the game is 21. The object of the game of 21 is to get as close as you can to 21 without going over. Ready? Here we go. Down and dirty. I get a 10 of diamonds. You got ace of diamonds. I get nine of spades for 19. It's going to be tough, Tin Man. <laughs> you got a king, blackjack, 21. I'll be damned. It's not eight balls, 21. One thing, though, Tin Man. Better not catch you counting cards. Jack? Yeah? Kiss my butt. <laughs> That's my partner. <laughs> 